Welcome to Dad Perfect, a podcast for busy dads and our favorite heroes, the wives who stand with them. Dads who understand that investing in your family is the greatest investment you can ever make. Dads who are ready to dig deep and become the perfect dad for your family to become Dad Perfect. Hey everybody, welcome to the Dad Perfect podcast. I'm David Rasmussen, your host. This is episode five, where we will be introducing the principle, forgive freely. This is the third of our nine core principles of perfectly devoted dads. Thank you for joining me today. Welcome especially to all of you who are listening for the first time. As always, we want to extend a welcome to the wives who are joining us. As fathers, we know that we are nothing without you. Forgiveness. This is a simple word, but a powerful principle. It may be one of the hardest principles to implement in your family, but it will also create some of the quickest and most powerful changes in your home. The concept of forgiveness is often considered the domain of religion, reserved only for discussions in church or taught across the pulpit. But did you know that research has shown that one's ability to forgive actually has an impact on their health, both emotionally and physiologically? Since the 1990s, There have been thousands of studies done on the impact of forgiveness on one's health and on their relationships. Here's just a sampling of some of the people who are leading the charge in this work. Dr. Robert Enright. He's the co-founder of the International Forgiveness Institute and professor at the University of Wisconsin-Madison. Dr. Fred Luskin is the co-founder and director of the Stanford Forgiveness Project. And Dr. Everett Worthington is a professor emeritus at Virginia Commonwealth University. These men, along with many more, have dedicated their lives to researching and understanding the power of forgiveness in our lives. I'm sharing this with you to emphasize that forgiveness does have real power. Power that can literally change and heal lives. The Mayo Clinic lists the following benefits of forgiveness. Healthier relationships. Improved mental health. Less anxiety, stress, and hostility. Fewer symptoms of depression, lower blood pressure, a stronger immune system, improved heart health, and improved self-esteem. So with so many great benefits to forgiving each other, why don't we do it more often? Why is forgiveness so hard? Well, the short answer is humans, we are wired to naturally want payback, vengeance. The long answer has a little more detail that's helpful. Some studies done in Switzerland using fMRIs, which are functional magnetic resonance imaging of our brains, show that the brain's pleasure pathways light up right before a person enacts vengeance. So in essence, we have a natural impulse to make things even or fair or just. And to complicate things even more, we all have different personalities. Some personalities are more agreeable to forgiveness while others are not. Anger, anxiety, fear, and a sense of entitlement also contribute to making forgiveness more difficult. But the good news is, no matter your circumstances, no matter your personality, no matter your emotions, everyone can learn to forgive. The evidence of health benefits we receive from forgiving others is well-researched and proven, but this is a podcast for dads, not a medical or psychology podcast. So let's talk specifically about why forgiveness is such an important principle of being a dad and why I have it as the third principle of perfectly devoted dads. Forgiveness is a tool not often utilized within families and especially by fathers. Yet I believe it is possibly the most important tool in your fatherhood tool belt, if you will. So there's a myth about forgiveness. When it comes to apologizing, we usually get it all wrong. How often do we say, but I'm not the one who did something wrong. So the myth of forgiveness is that it's about who's right or who's wrong, but that's not it. It's not about fairness or justice. Forgiveness actually has nothing to do with these things. Forgiveness has nothing to do with who's right or wrong or about being fair or exacting justice. Forgiveness stands on its own. It is completely independent of the situation that you are in. It has nothing to do with fairness, justice, or being right or wrong. I know I've said that a lot, but that's an important principle. It has nothing to do with fairness, justice, or being right or wrong. Forgiveness is a choice, a choice that is all yours. 
Nobody can make you do it or prevent you from doing it. It is yours, and it's yours alone. Forgiveness is about letting go. It's about healing. It's about moving forward, untethered. But most of all, forgiveness is about love. You'll learn throughout these podcasts that I use the word love to refer to something real, something powerful, something that has force. A love that is much deeper than a physical attraction or a physically intimate relationship. Love is the drive within us that moves us to act and sacrifice for the ultimate benefit of those that we love. Forgiveness is a form of sacrificing for those we love. We naturally want to hold on to those feelings that hurt. It's a strange thing that we do. When we hold on to the hurt, we do it because it gives us leverage, ammunition, if you will. It gives us justification or reason for feeling the way we do, for feeling angry, hurt, or resentful. And then it gets even stranger. We start looking for more evidence, if you will, to add more justification for our feelings. So let me share a personal example. And it's hard for me to share this example because I have to admit my own fault. But it illustrates this principle well. I have learned that my love language is time. I feel love from people when they share their time with me and when they respect my time. I share my love for them by giving them of my time. We all have different ways that we show and receive love, but time is mine. And unfortunately, I didn't learn this until later in my life. And when I was a child, it really hurt when my dad did not come to my events or was late to drop me off or pick me up from soccer practice or violin lessons. I was convinced that my dad did not love me. I remember multiple times asking my mom in tears, why doesn't dad love me? I was very self-centered at the time, as most kids are, and not very sympathetic to my dad's situation. And during that time, he was working two full-time jobs. One of them was his own business, and another was to make sure that we had a paycheck coming in. I'm sure you may have all been in a situation like that. And he was serving in our church in a capacity that demanded a huge amount of his time. And to top it all off, he was caring for my mom, who was dying of cancer. And in spite of everything he was dealing with, I believe that he didn't love me because he wasn't giving me of his time in the way that I thought he should. And this became a narrative in my own mind, a false reality, if you will. And I unconsciously started looking for evidence of my feelings, evidence to prove that my feelings were justified, that they were correct. And I would remember every single time that he missed an event or was late to pick me up. Essentially, I had created my own bank of evidence for my own false world. The reality is that my dad did miss a lot of events that were important to me, and he was late to pick me up a lot. But here's where I was wrong. It wasn't because he didn't love me. It was my choice to believe that was the reason. And once I made that unconscious choice, I kept looking for the evidence to prove that my choice was correct, that I was right. Now, I've grown up a lot since then. I've matured a lot and learned a lot. And now I know that my dad has always loved me and that he would and has given everything for me, for his whole family. This is the truth. My dad loves me and his family more than anything else in the world. But we all build our own false worlds, like I did. We choose to hold on to something that isn't true, often something that hurts, and we look for justification for our feelings, seeking and finding this evidence to support our feelings. We do it because when it is someone else's fault, then we don't have to accept responsibility for how we feel. And therefore, we are not in the wrong. It's not our fault. We don't have to face the reality that we are actually the ones creating the problem, not them. It's us. This is so strange, but it's real. We do this. We all do this. So what does all of this false world and false evidence have to do with forgiveness? It's actually pretty simple. Forgiveness breaks down the false wall that we've built around ourselves and it allows the love to come in. It allows us to see and to feel the truth, but it's a little different than you may think. So I'm going to finish my example. I didn't need to forgive my dad. I needed to ask for his forgiveness. Again, forgiveness isn't about who is right or wrong. It's about healing. I needed to feel love for my dad, and I needed to be healed. I needed to ask for his forgiveness. Within our families, 
there are three specific benefits that come from forgiveness. And as fathers, we can set the example. We can build a culture of forgiveness in our homes. So first, forgiveness heals conflict. When we practice forgiveness in our homes, we heal conflict. Conflict will happen. It's unavoidable, but we don't need to give it root in our homes. Conflict is poison and it festers and grows if it's allowed to live in our homes. Don't let conflict be a part of your home. If it already is, then the great news is you can stop it. Forgiveness is like the most powerful and effective antibiotic possible for conflict. Forgiveness heals immediately. I understand that conflict involves two people. We cannot control the choices and actions of others. All we can do is be in control of ourselves. Forgiveness heals the person who is asking for forgiveness. The person you are asking will have to make their own choice on whether or not they will forgive you. But regardless of their choice, by you asking their forgiveness, you heal yourself. And it's remarkable how powerful that is, how healing that is, and how quickly that breaks the conflict in a relationship and in your home. Second, forgiveness moves us forward. As we've already discussed, forgiveness is more than who is right or wrong. Forgiveness is a manifestation of true love. It says to the person being forgiven, I love you above all. It creates a solid foundation on which a relationship can build, knowing that you can shoot for the stars even if you miss most of the time. So forgiveness gives you and your family freedom, freedom to love unconditionally and always look to the future. Mistakes happen. Hurtful words are said. Bad choices are made. We all do this. Without forgiveness, these mistakes will add anchors to our families and relationships that drag along behind us, never letting us free to reach our full potential as individuals and as a family. Without forgiveness, we are like Marley's ghost in Charles Dickens' A Christmas Carol. And we drag around these chains made of resentment, hurt, anger, fear, and victimization. And when we establish a pattern and culture of forgiveness in our families, we are free of those chains. We are free to move forward in life, free to love each other unconditionally, free to be the best that we can be. Our homes become a place of safety, a place where no one is unwanted or a failure, a place where love can empower us to reach great heights, a place where grudges are not held, a place where love is shared, and families love more than they grudge when forgiveness is the culture of your family. Third, your example as a father sets the pattern for your family. When a family has a father who asks for and gives forgiveness freely, it sets an example for the rest of the family. Start by asking forgiveness of your wife and of your children. Now, this is very important. Forgiveness must be in word and in deed. It must be said. You must say, I forgive you. It must be asked for. Will you forgive me? I recommend practicing saying these words out loud. It's harder than you may think. Just practicing saying it to yourself out loud. I'm sorry. Will you forgive me? I forgive you. And saying those words, it helps just to vocalize them. And then whenever someone asks your forgiveness, be quick to forgive. Don't hold back your forgiveness. This will only hurt and discourage them from asking next time. Be quick to forgive and always forgive. Just remember, it's not about who's right or wrong. It's about healing and love. Forgive quickly. Let it go. You love your family. Let it go. Forgive them. And be quick to ask their forgiveness. Be quick to give forgiveness and give it fully. And then one last very important element to the principle of forgiveness. And this one may be the hardest of all, especially for us dads. Dads, you have to forgive yourself. We are human. We make mistakes. We say the wrong things. We make the wrong choices. We try not to, but we do. And you'll have to ask forgiveness to those that you may have hurt when you do this. But you have to forgive yourself as well. This is critical. Forgiving yourself of your own mistakes removes those anchors dragging you down. Move on. Make a plan not to repeat your mistakes. Forgive yourself when you do, and then keep moving forward. In my home, we forgive each other. We say the words, I'm sorry, will you forgive me? And we do it quickly and we do it frequently. And the nice thing is it has become part of who we are. It's not strange or uncomfortable, but it 
still has just as much effect and power. We know this works in our home. So to review what we've talked about today, first, forgiveness is not about who is right or wrong. It's about love. Second, forgiveness breaks that false world. It breaks the false feelings we choose to hold on to that create division and hurt. Third, forgiveness heals conflict in our relationships and in our homes. Fourth, forgiveness moves us forward. And fifth, forgiveness is practiced. And we as dads set the example. We set the culture in our homes. I know that you can do this. I know you can. Don't give in to the doubt or discouragement. You won't be perfect. Nobody is. This is why we need forgiveness. And the key again is don't give up. Keep trying. I am so excited to share these nine principles with you. In each day, I strive to implement them in my life. They really are a part of who I am. They are a part of my efforts to be the best dad that I can be for my family. And I know that they work. Thank you for listening today. If you want more, you can get it. More resources, more stories, more tips and strategies, more access to experts, more dads and moms sharing their own experiences and more support and encouragement and much more. Simply go to dadperfect.com and sign up. Thank you again for listening. I'm so excited to be on this journey with you. Until next time, remember, you are the perfect dad for your family. You are dad perfect. This has been the Dad Perfect Podcast. Thank you for listening. If you want more, you can get it. More resources, more tips and strategies, more dads and moms sharing experiences, and much more. Simply go to dadperfect.com and sign up. That's dadperfect.com to sign up for more. Until next time, remember, you are the perfect dad for your family. You are dad perfect. Perfect.